Hello everyone, it is Matt here from Scoop in Response, and today we are looking at a new commander, uh, Tatiova Stuart of Tides, which is releasing with Dominari United later on this year. Uh, so it reads a as a uh, green, green, blue, so Simic, for a 3-3 legendary creature, Merfolk, Druid. Uh, it is a really exciting lands matters commander so we've got uh land creatures you control have flying whenever land enters the battlefield under your control if you control seven or more lands up to one target land you control becomes a three three elemental creature with haste it's still a land so it's really interesting um it's kind of a alternative way to look at something like scape shift um and that's kind of the direction that we're going to be taking it in um Valakit in Commander is quite problematic as you really need to have like the ideal scenario of setting up with a Vesuver and a Valakit and a Thespian stage and then scape shifting and getting a whole bunch of lands coming in at the same time. You know, it's quite difficult to do that sort of 120 damage that you need to with Valakit. So the only other real ways that you could be doing a scape shift victory in um in Commander is uh, using something like uh, Mazer's End, and uh, we're not gonna be doing that today, but um, Mazer's End, you know, is probably a good uh, a good payoff for something like Scape Shift in Commander, but um, now I think we actually have another viable way, which is really just around the beatdowns um, that we're gonna be doing uh, with, with Tatiova. Now, the whole deck isn't just built around Scape Shift, it, it's certainly included, but we're gonna be looking how we can take advantage of, excuse me, out of Tatiova, uh, best as possible. Um, so let's jump straight into the deck. So we've got our creatures here. Um, we're running really heavy amounts of creatures. Um, you know, we've got uh, 31 in the list currently. Um, there, uh, there's, there's obviously like a lot of the ramp that we want to be doing has got to be connected to lands, but we do have a bit of an elf package as well. So. Um, yeah, let's just sort of look over them all individually. Arboreal Grazer is, um, you know, it's really good given that it has reach, which I think is a lot more relevant in uh, in Commander. You've got uh, the ability to just block that lethal Commander damage as well as the uh, ramping. Birds of Paradise, Elvish Mystic, Finhorn Elves, Lanawai Elves. <clears throat> all of these are just your, your typical dorks in the one drop slot. We've got Kyrian Ranger, which is, um, you know, you're recycling your land basically, and you get to take advantage of uh, the untapped target creature as well. Um, this gets really weird when you've got cards like uh, Yavamaya, um, which makes everything a forest. Uh, and then you can also see uh, we've got a Shire, so that means all of your creatures are now forest lands as well. So uh, it's more of a combo piece than just a, a sort of um, strict dork recycler or anything like that. Um, collector Roof, so we're really light on um, tapping artifacts for mana. There's really just a couple uh, for this particular list. So uh, really good include in a green deck. We've got Gretchen Titchwillow. Um, now, while there are there are infinite land, uh, there are infinite mana um, sort of combos in this list. This is really one of the only outlets that we have that's uh, you know sort of simple. It's just drawing a card. You put the land. You know, you growth spiral for four each turn, uh, each time you activate it. So, just really good sync for this type of deck. So, yeah, very cool. Lotus Cobra, we're just going to be taking advantage of extra landfalls, and each time we do that, we're going to grab ourselves uh, an extra mana of any color. Uh, Priest of Titania to work with the Elf Ball. We've got Sylvan Advocate. Now, this is probably the first of the ones that you don't see in sort of any green X deck. Um, so it's a two drop, two three, Vigilance, Elf Druid Ally. As long as you control six more lands, Sylvan Advocate and land creatures you control get plus two, plus two. So you can see where we're going with this. We've got Sylvan Advocate um, ramping our, uh, uh, sorry, pumping our land creatures. We're turning things into land creatures with uh, Tatiova and sort of things are gonna sort of kick off from there. Aura of Autumn is an absolutely phenomenal card. A uh, really good staple, I think, um, since it's printing. You basically get to play lands and creatures off the top of your deck, which is 60 excuse me 60 to 70 percent of our uh, our list overall 
Azusa Lost But Seeking, the extra land drops. Circle of Dreams Druid is uh, really just uh, Magus of the Cradle, so really good there. Corsair of Crufix playing lands off the top of our deck. We've got life gain whenever land enters the battlefield. So you can see with Corsair of Crufix and uh, Ashire, the Kyrian Ranger, this is actually an infinite life combo. So Corsair of Crufix, whenever a land ETBs, you gain a life. Ashire makes everything lands. Kyrian Ranger lets you return Kyrian Ranger to hand to uh, untap a creature. So you can do the loop, which I have in my Ashire and Eudora decks where you use the Kyrian Ranger to ETB, then you activate the Kyrian Ranger and return the forest, which is Kyrian Ranger, to untap the Ashire, which is the creature. You use the Ashire and tap the Ashire to replay the Kyrian Ranger, and you just net uh, infinite ETBs with that, which gets you infinite life with this one. Infinite mana with Lotus Cobra, a whole bunch of other weird and wonderful things to do with that. Uh, yeah. So that's that combo. Uh, we've got Eternal Witness just for rebuying things from the yard. Ramanap Excavator for getting things back from the yard, uh, getting your lands back from the yard when they are, uh, you know, uh, so fetch lands, all of that kind of stuff, or if they get destroyed. We've got Spellseeker, so we'll go into the things that Spellseeker can grab uh, in a bit, but this is just an awesome tutor card on a dude. Uh, really, really sweet card. I can't, uh, can't speak high enough of this card. Uh, Tireless Provisioner and Tireless Tracker, we just got those landfall effects, uh, you know, making treasure or food or, you know, anything like that, uh, or just those clue tokens as well. Next up, we've got Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, which is just a growth spiral for three, and then you can escape him and do a whole bunch of cool shit with that. Then we've got uh, Lay Weaver and Law Weaver. Now we've got Law Weaver we'll look at first. So they've got partner with Lay, Lay Weaver. So you find one, you go and get the other. So Law Weaver is a is a sink, so you can just, you know, draw cards. Uh, you can also have you you can also just win on the spot by having your opponents draw all of their cards. Um, you know, you just put a million activations onto the stack uh, if you have infinite mana. And uh, you know, they will all lose the game. Really cool there. And uh, Lay Weaver, so it's another infinite combo with uh, a Shire. Uh, on the battlefield so you can untap itself and another land which uh, with the Shire will but you know both will be creatures so uh, the Lay Weaver will target itself from one other land you tap the other land for mana then you activate the Lay Weaver untapping the Lay Weaver and another um, creature for mana so continuously just do that loop um, really cool uh, with that <clears throat> And the great thing is, yeah, they tutor for each other. So very cool card advantage in that respect. Oracle of Moldia, just another land off the top uh, creature. We have Tima Sabretooth um, for bouncing uh, things, you know, repeatedly getting those uh, landfall triggers or even protecting uh, itself or another uh, creature. So really, <clears throat> excuse me, really cool with that. Um, Ashire, which is just a awesome, awesome combo piece in the deck. Uh, you know, all of your non-token creatures are forest lands in addition to the other types, which are going to get pumped by some of the abilities that we've got. Next up is one that you haven't seen all the time, which is Embodiment of Insight. It has the same ability as a Shire. It has the same ability as a Shire, but it gives the land creatures vigilance as well. So you can attack with them and then tap with them, you know, at a, at a given point later on. Um, but it's also got that landfall trigger of, you know, things becoming a 3-3 with haste. Um, got the other Tatiova, just a great way to sort of smooth everything out. Land ETBs, you gain a life and draw a card, so really sweet there. Timber Protector, awesome card in this list. Other tree folk creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other tree folk and forests you control are indestructible. So basically, if we assemble Tron and we have Timber Protector, a Shire Soul of the Wild, uh, and the Tatiova out, we've got all of our creatures are indestructible flyers uh, with vigilance that we can attack into and sort of go from there and win the game. We only lose to exile effects. Titania, uh, just a solid card, produces beaters, works with our land effect. And Eudora, so whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control, it's a forest land. The idea is that you have uh, the land enter the battlefield uh, after it is died, it's face down, it's forest land, which triggers uh, Tatiova, so you get an ETB where you turn that into a creature. So if you have a sack outlet, for instance, 
you've just got unlimited, uh, you know, sacks and taps. Uh, so yeah, really, really cool stuff. Uh, they also come in untapped and then you can tap them so you can generate infinite mana uh, with any sack outlet with that one. So very, very cool. Okay, next up we have our instant sorceries, enchantments and everything else. Um, so right from the very top, we've got our Green Sun Zenith. It's just going to go and search and get every single creature out of our deck uh, with the exception of maybe two or three, I think, are the only ones. I think it's just two. So yeah, you, can get Law you can't get Law Weaver and you can't get Spellseeker, but every other creature you can get. Ponder Preordain just for a bit of cantripping. Uh, you know, sort of typical staples there. Uh, we've got Explore, um, you know, land drops are great. Into the North, uh, another sort of similar thing. Uh, it's occurred to me you should also be running Nature's Law, but I don't think I've put it in this version of the list, but you definitely should be running Nature's Law. We've got Finale of Devastation, which is, you know, a, a win con. We're going to turn all of our creatures into enormous beaters once we have infinite mana, or not even infinite, you really just need... Mm, yeah, gosh, not even that much. Uh, you know, you probably need X is, X is 15 most of the time to, to at least get the job done um, with that. Um, so yeah, really good, but also tutoring for, you know, those abilities that are gonna provide pumps as well. Life from the Loam, everything, uh, you know, all of our lands, which we'll go into, uh, you know, super useful to just uh, be, you know, buying them back continuously. Life from the Loam, I just cannot get over how great this card just seems to be in everything. We've got Regrowth, so it's just, it's a tutor, uh, along with everything else that we've seen so far, uh, tutors for Spellseeker. So that's kind of the theme with all of these. Sylvan Scrying lets us search for a Sylvan Scrying, fuck. Sylvan Scrying lets us search for uh, any of the lands that we want and puts it into our hand, so it's really good with that. Three visits, another ramp, and uh, we've got Sylvan Awakening, uh, you know, next. Until your next turn, all lands you control become 2-2 elemental creatures with reach, indestructible, and haste. They're still lands. So we're already making our lands, uh, you know, dudes with the commander but this is just another way to give them you know additional utility so we've got that indestructibility giving them reach and it's until your next turn so it means that if we've got something giving all of our lands uh you know uh vigilance and uh you know as well it means that we can be attacking and blocking uh you know with them at the same time so we, we do have the excuse me the embodiment of insight which is the vigilance granter in the deck so yeah really cool stuff with that um this should be like sort of you know for when you want to alpha strike now because if you if you do have a shire out as well um you know everything's going to be uh a a land and then if you've got you know those sylvan uh, advocates out you know you're going to get pumping all, all of that stuff too so it'll actually pump your creatures so very cool scape shift Right, so it should be clear now uh, what Scapeshift does in the deck. Um, so with Tatiova, you don't have to sacrifice, uh, you don't have to have the land that comes into play become a creature. You can have any land that you control become a creature. So if you have 12 lands and you want to cast Scapeshift, you can cast that, you sacrifice six of them, and then the other six lands you can then target which you didn't tap, so you've got six three threes and you can attack for 18 in that scenario. So it's very much something that you can, you don't have to, you know, because those lands enter tapped, you don't have to target the land that enters tapped. But there is, however, a card in this deck which lets you uh, have lands that would enter tapped, uh, you know, enter untapped, uh, which is Amulet of Vigor. So in that instance, you can scape shift all of your lands, they all become creatures you have them all individually become creatures and then they're all individually untapped and you can attack for insane damage there bring to light now bring to light is kind of like a second copy of scape shift but you need to jump through some hoops in order to do it because we are only a two color deck so you need to be able to add additional colors of mana with cards like lotus cobra or birds of paradise um, those are the main two ways of doing it you know there's more ways that you could be looking at doing it if you wanted to sort of change up the mana base or you know add sort of you know the rainbow lands uh like uh mana confluence and city of brass and all of that you could definitely do that if you wanted to i just think this card is like good enough to be able to go and get uh 
for example, uh, Life from the Loam is just good enough to go and get with Bring to Light in this deck. You can just go and get your Life from the Loam and you know that's just gonna be a repeatable card adv advantage for you each turn. Last sorcery we've got is Hour of Promise. Search for two land cards, put them onto the battlefield. The rest of the text is uh, unimportant. But yeah, really good ramp spell, lets you get specific lands. Instance, uh, Brainstorm, Crop Rotation, Vitalize, Cyclonic Rift, Growth Spiral, and the big Growth Spiral, which is Eureka Moment. Uh, we're not really, you know, big on uh, a whole bunch of instants. As you can see, you know, all of our non-creature, non-lands only make up a third of the deck. So, you know, Cantrips, um, Land Tutors, Vitalize is basically just a ritual once you have, you know, an effect giving everything, uh, you know, all of your lands creatures or all of your creatures lands, um, you know, that's basically, you know, what you want to be using for that. Um, Cyclonic Rift to basically be your board wipe, um, you know, which is one sided and you can definitely get up to seven mana super easily with this and Gross Spiral and Eureka Moment for those extra land drops. Artifacts, we've got Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt. Altar of the Brood, Amulet of Vigor, Expedition Map, Soul Ring, Altar of Dementia, and Null Rod. So, we've got some uh, Nombos here with Null Rod, and you would have recalled the Collector Oof previously. Um, yeah, there is a bit of a Nombo with that, but the reality is there's only a few uh, actual um, rocks here that we want to be tapping for mana. So, Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, Expedition Map, and Soul Ring are the only ones that are really affected. Um, the reality is you want to be timing your Null Rods and your Collector Oofs around these four, so you want to make sure that you can take advantage of all of these before. The only card that is really a problem with uh, Null Rod and Collector Oof is this Altar of Dementia. And that's because that is kind of like a win con that gets turned off by your Null Rod or Collector Oof. In terms of utility for each card, we've got Altar of the Brood, which doesn't get affected by other of those things. There's no activated ability, so that's sweet. It's just whenever another permanent ETBs, uh, your opponent puts the top card of his or her library into the graveyard. So uh, you can do something like the Kyrian Ranger Loop that we talked about, where you just mill your opponents to death. Uh, you know, that's really cool. Um, yeah, there's lots of ways to sort of take advantage of that. And we are an Urza Saga deck, so that means that we can go and get literally all of these cards. So the Jeweled Lotus Crypt, Brood, Vigor, Expedition Map, Soul Ring. We can get all of them with this. Um, so it means that the Urza Saga can be a win con if we want it to. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the idea with that. Um, the Altar of Dementia, you know, as we mentioned, is quite good for the um, those, those sack loops. Uh, yeah, really sweet with that. You know, Eudora works well with the Altar of Dementia and things like that. Uh, the last few <clears throat> non-lands that we're looking at are Exploration, which is you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Not a lot to be said about that. Retreat to Coral Helm. Uh, so land ETBs, you untap target creature. This just makes infinite mana with the Shire and Eudora and all of those other things. So very cool. And then Earth Surge. Each land gets plus two, plus two, as long as it's a creature. So that means if you have a Shire out, this is just a strict Lord. You have Eudora out, um, you know, with Tatiova as well, same deal. It means that all of your uh, lands, you know, become five fives or seven sevens, depending on, you know, if you've got both of them out. So really, really sweet with respect to that. If you wanted to sort of go a bit deeper into it, it's maybe getting a bit lost in the source, but you could probably run something like Mirror Maid and create a token copy. Oh, sorry, create a copy with Mirror Maid of the Earth Surge. Then you can uh, get the effect twice. So lots of cool ways. Uh, it's also the... Uh, that artifact that you target another permanent and becomes a copy of that permanent, you could run that too. It's really fun. But yeah, I think these I think these cards are really sweet in this list. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty well just you know making them being five fives is actually really relevant because it's you know neatly eight lands need to attack to to kill an opponent. And the hero of the deck, or rather the heroes of the deck, is, is our land. So. At first, it's probably a little bit of a strange, uh, I guess, collection of lands. You know, we've got Urza Saga and Field and Lotus Field and Cavern and Cradle and, and uh, Glacial Chasm. You know, there's all, all these kind of like weird and wonderful cards. But basically, we want to make sure that our lands are good. We want to make sure that we've got access to them, uh, you know, access to colors. And so we're playing a pretty neat and tidy, uh, you know, list. The Thespian Stage 
and the Drown Yard Temple are a bit weird. They're the ones that don't give us access to our colors. And same with the Dark Deaths. I love a good Dark Deaths combo. Uh, I think this is the kind of list where you can afford to, uh, you know, fuck around with your uh, lands a little bit. And I think you can get away with just occasionally using Merit Lage to beat for 20 in the air and uh, there's not a lot that can be done about it. Uh, it's definitely that kind of list that you can just relax and uh, sit back and, and watch, you know, everyone else fight over the, the board state, which you don't have to worry about too much. You know, you've got uh, a lot of utility in what you're going to be doing with your lands. So yeah, it's really useful in that regard. Um, yeah, Hall of the Storm Giants is another big beater. We've got Field of the Dead, which is kind of a semi-nombo with the the Lotus Field, but Field of the Dead is just great for some token blockers when you need them. Got the Urza Saga and the Yavimaya Cradle. What's a really cool, interesting thing for Yavimaya Cradle with, uh, sorry, yeah, Yavimaya Cradle and Guy's Cradle is because Guy's Cradle becomes a forest, it means you can untap it with Kyrian Ranger and uh, Arbor Elf and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much the list. Rounding it out, we've got Basics, uh, Ottawara Beseju, you know, Breeding Pool and uh, Tropical Island. You don't need to have Tropical Island and Guy's Cradle to play this deck. You know, swap them out for the, the crowd lands or whatever you like. Um, you know, you can swap the Cradle for a um, the enchantment that does the same thing, Growing Rights of Itlamok. Um, you know, perfectly reasonable. You know, not everyone's got two and a half grand to spend on, uh, on two cards, so don't blame you with that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the, the list. Um, Thank you so much for checking out the deck tech and uh, yeah, if you have any comments or feedback, love to hear them. Really curious to see what other people, how they're building this deck, if you're putting it into the 99 of another list or if you're just going to outright run Tatiova as the commander, keen to see how you're building it. But thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.